Hello and welcome back to the 10th and final day of our sourdough starter experiment. Um, water starter versus milk starter. So, I don't know if you can tell. <laughs> I think that you can. This is the rubber band. This water sourdough starter has doubled. It has absolutely doubled in size um, since I fed it yesterday. So, here is the water sourdough starter. It is nice and bubbly. It has doubled in size. It is bubbly on top. It is exactly how you want your starter to look on day 10. Now, if you could smell this, I mean, you would know it's just right. If you've ever taken a loaf of sourdough bread and smelled it, that is what this sourdough starter smells like. I mean, it just smells right. <laughs> now, there's no hooch on top. There's still bubbles coming and popping to the surface. So because this is day 10 and I fully intend on baking with it tomorrow, I'm not going to feed my sourdough starter today. Um, I, I thought long and hard about it and I have gone back and forth on changing my mind, but because this is so active, and thick and beautiful, I wanna leave it alone. I don't wanna mess it up, so I'm gonna leave it alone. Now, here is the milk sourdough starter. <laughs> here is the rubber band, and here's where it has rose, risen to. So it has not doubled in size, but this milk starter has never really doubled in size. Um, certainly not like the water sourdough starter did. Now, this one smells, it has a slight scent of alcohol to it. It has a strong scent of alcohol to it, okay? It smells like, like, like liquor. <laughs> It really does. I mean, it smells sour, but it's it has a strong alcohol odor to it. Now, if you know what hooch is, you know that hooch is alcohol. It's what's produced when your sourdough starter is missing a feeding or needs to be fed and the hooch forms on top, it's secreting alcohol. So I really think I'm gonna leave this one alone too. If it produces hooch tomorrow, I'll feed it. I'll bake a sourdough loaf with it on Saturday. Tomorrow is Friday. I fully intend on baking a, at least a sourdough loaf of bread tomorrow night. So that's why I'm going to leave my water sourdough starter alone and I'm not gonna feed it, I'm just, just gonna leave it. My milk sourdough starter, I also intend on baking a loaf tomorrow so that I can show a difference when I slice the bread. Um, but just because this one has so many bubbles formed on top, there's bubbles on the bottom, it looks really active and it smells like alcohol um, or it smells sour, I'm gonna leave this one alone too. So tonight I am not going to feed my sourdough starters because I'm going to bake with them tomorrow. Now, having said that, I am going to feed them tomorrow on day 11 after I take what I need out of them to make the bread. So. What that means is if I'm using a sourdough starter that calls for two cups, or I'm sorry, if I'm using a sourdough bread recipe that calls for two cups of sourdough starter, I'm going to take two cups of sourdough starter and then I'm going to feed my sourdough starter to replenish it. After I feed it, the water sourdough starter and the milk sourdough starter, I am going to put them in the refrigerator. 
The reason I'm gonna do this is because once you put the sourdough starters in the refrigerator, it makes the bacteria dormant. It doesn't kill it, but it makes it dormant, which means I don't have to feed it every single day. And it's going to um, essentially make the little yeasties go sleepy. So that means I don't have to feed it every day. And the only reason why you would really leave out a sourdough starter at room temperature and feed it every day is if you had a bakery or you were going to use your sourdough starter to bake something sourdough every single day. I have a full-time job. I coach volleyball. My other kid's in basketball for the summer and my other kid is in soccer for the summer. Um, I don't have time to bake something sourdough every single day. I would love to. Maybe in the future I'll do like a week of sourdough recipes. That would be a good video. But it's not gonna happen this week. It's probably not gonna happen this month. Um, so that being said, I'm going to leave my sourdough starters alone. I will do probably just like a short video um, on baking with my sourdough starters tomorrow. I will post a video and I will post the recipe that I'm using to bake them, but I really just want to get through the whole baking process and the kneading process and letting it rise. And then I will show you a video of both of my loaves of sourdough and I will cut them so you can see the difference. And then maybe then we'll determine which by taste, by smell, and by the, the appearance of the bread, like how, how much it rises or how, um, what the density of the bread is, then we'll decide which is better, the water sourdough starter or the 1920s milk sourdough starter. I've gone back and forth this entire time on which one I think is better. And I'm gonna be honest, I flip-flopped right back to the water sourdough starter on which one I think is better. But we'll see. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe the milk sourdough starter makes a better bread. Maybe it makes a better English muffin. Maybe there's a reason why there is two different sourdough starter recipes. We're gonna find out. So, stick around. <laughs>